Come on in my room. Hey, hey, come on in my room. Jesus, y'all know the rest. Listen, y'all need to hurry up and get in here because Fire Marshal John is coming tonight. And what I'm trying to do is get everybody in the sanctuary that we're going to shot the doors. We're going to shot the doors so his ass can't get in here because, baby, this Club Shay Shay interview that Monique just did and D.L. Hughley's epic response don't set the internet on fire, honey, and we got to discuss. We got to sit down and discuss, baby. I had reached deep down in my closet. I had to get my old first lady deaconess piece of St. John's wear to put on, honey. And I know we in the church, but I had to go pull me some uh, Baileys. See, this ain't hard liquor. This just a little Baileys. The Lord ain't going to mind if we drank a little Baileys down to the sanctuary. Let me turn the fan on. This damn uh, St. John got me hot. Hold on. Y'all see how people who work from home don't be child be having no basketball shorts and a blouse and got the nerve to put makeup on. Uh, but you got on some damn basketball shorts, honey. I got my Hillary Clinton St. John's on, honey, because we finna have to read the girls. Let me let me get good. Let me get good and situated. The girls need to come on and get in the building, honey. Need to come on and get in the building. And I know, y'all see that microphone? I'm waiting for the arms so I can get closer. Y'all, we got a lot of good stuff going on tonight. I told y'all that with some of the money that was donated to the church, we upgraded the audio visual. Tonight, I'm going to show y'all one of our upgrades. We are now able to play the sound from various interviews. A lot of people were saying that they didn't see nor hear the Club Shay Shay interview with Monique. Oh, baby, don't you worry. I heard y'all cry as y'all was saying, Q, we want you to put the pictures up. Q, we want you to play the links. Q, we want you to play the sound so we can know what you're talking about. And um, tonight, honey, tonight, y'all going to get a, 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 a dose of the doll playing the sound. I'm going to go ahead and cover one story or two stories before we cover Club Shay Shay to get the girls, the saints, some time to get in. So it is being reported that Braxton Family Values is returning to WeTV. Are we here for it or no? Nah? Quiet as it's kept, I'm here for it. Um, the Braxton's negative bank accounts is here for it. And WeTV's absence of ratings is here for it. So it's a win-win for everybody. The only person who's not here for it is Tracy Braxton, unfortunately. Rest in peace. We are definitely going to miss Tracy because she was a very important and a funny part of that show. But there are a lot of things we got to discuss about this Braxton family values. I'm here to tell you, Tamar, if you about to come back and be on the same shit that you was on with the first iteration of the show, y'all hoes could keep it. Y'all could keep it, okay? If y'all maybe finna come back, if Miss Evelyn Braxton finna come back, with that ornery ass, nasty ass attitude and that stiff gold wig, y'all could keep it. Okay? Y'all could keep it. Because she's so full of the Lord that she ain't got no softness in her. Miss Evelyn and Dr. Jackie need to roll together because both of them old her helpers is very nice, nasty. Kim Burrell, Dr. Jackie, Miss Evelyn, Mama Joyce. Um, all of they ass need to roll together. Throw Iyanla Van Zandt ass in that group too. Throw Oprah and Gail ass in there with them too. Who else ass could go in there with them? Put Star Jones ass in there with them. Um, who else ass could go in there? Who, who, who are the black women's we don't like? The old, nice, nasty ones. All them Claude sisters could go in there. Um, who else could go in there? Um, Oprah and Gail ass could go in there. Uh, who else ass? Who else ass? Now nah, they said Mama D, now nah, Mama D too, uh, too ghetto. And, and she not smart enough. Angie Stone ass could go in there. Omarosa ass could go in there. Um, Giselle ass could go in there. Um, You might as well put Dr. Heavenly and Simone ass in there. We're going to call this the Miserable Girls Club, okay? That's what Natalie Nunn and me, ooh, Jesus. 
Could you imagine them old hoes tussling and twirling down to the restaurant while Mama Joyce and I mean while uh 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 Mama Evelyn somewhere over there praying? Now who's she praying? Anita Baker ass could go in there. That's right, Jalita Brown. Anita Baker can go in there. All them old nice nasty hussies. All right, all of them, all they ask to go in there. Y'all go back up off Anita. See, y'all did that to be messy and to be nasty to take a dig at me. Whitney Houston and Sissy Houston and Dion Warwick could go in there. Aretha ask a Paul Thomas Lee go in there. Kelly, uh, Kelly Price ask to go in there. Tina Knowles ask could go in there. Now, Tokyo Tony, she too ghetto. She gonna be over there with Mama D. Juanita Bynum ask could go in there. I'm trying to think who else. Them old nice, nasty social security helpers. Old social security puss. Yeah, Patty LaBelle ass could go in there, show can. Show can. Matter of fact, Tina knows y'all might be the damn president of it. That voodoo queen. Sonia Norwood ass could go in there, she show could. Damn sure could. My Brandy Mama. All the ass. Yolanda Adams ass. All them church holes are going there with they nice, nasty, sanctified asses. I think the most sanctified a person is, the most nasty they spirit is. Oh, nasty saints. Nevertheless, Braxton Family Values. Now, you know, this show coming back, it, it, it's bringing up a lot of angst and fever in a lot of people because people are like, you know, number one, Tamar, we're not here for your crying, your complaining, and your same antics, Right. Um, here is the beautiful thing about this situation. When they decided to end the series, Tamar and them were expressing that they were having some issues with the direction in which the show was going and, you know, pay rates and all those different things. The fact that everybody has come back to the drawing board suggests that this go around, everybody gets to structure this deal the way they want it, structure the creative the way they see it. So we are not here to hear anything about the network, the network, the network, the network did this, the network won't this. Um, unless y'all credit score don't dip so low and y'all bank account so in the red that y'all willing to tap dance for the man in order to get this check. And to be quite honest with you, that's what it's giving. Because Tamar flat out did say at one point she was done with reality television. Now we know Taewanda needed. Trina over there going with that deacon that, that run that defunct church. She need it. Um, no shade. Tracy gone now, so they get to, that's more budget money freed up. Um, Tony Braxton don't necessarily need it, but she want it. And I was nervous as hell. They said Tony Braxton was getting ready to go to Las Vegas and do a residency, child. And we know how that last residency turned up in bankruptcy. Okay, so quiet as it's kept. Tony Braxton probably somewhere over here pad in her account just in case no shade just in case her lupus decide to act up and she has to come off the stage again and i'm not throwing shade at her health because that's what caused her to have to leave the stage her lupus had not act up which caused her bank account to act up which caused that tour to act up which caused the bankruptcy courts to act up and we hoping when y'all come back this go around that none of y'all act up okay but get the check so that's that on braxton family values let me get one more story one more story, we get the Saints in here, then we're going to go on over to Club Shay Shay. See what else the girls want to talk about. I guess stand on par with stand on par with Braxton Family Values, you guys brought it to my attention that James Wright Chanel, a.k.a. the Patty Pie Man, is finally pressing charges of taking legal action against Krishan. Uh, I did not see the reporting on this. I just heard the gossip through y'all, and y'all wanted me to talk about it. And I also read the comments, and a lot of people are saying, you know what, James, it's too late. A lot of people saying, James, let it alone. A lot of people saying, James, you might as well go eat. A lot of people saying, James, you might be more successful at Soul Cycle. A lot of people saying, James, just take a long walk around the world. And I, yeah, yeah. Because the park ain't big enough. He need to walk around the world. Uh, that's what the people saying. But here's my rebuttal. If y'all gonna let them old white hussies come back from 1968 and cause Bill Cosby to go blind, then we gonna let James file a lawsuit for some shit that happened six months ago, okay? If he can come back from 1969, talk about they tussy cat was fondled in on Quaaludes, 
then we're going to let James... See, what James was waiting on was the insurance people to process his claim down to the dental office. And y'all know the insurance was backed up because of COVID. He was waiting on the paperwork to come through. So when he went to the court, he had all his paperwork together, all the videos edited. That's right. Uh, uh, which we call it, who said R. Kelly too. That's right. Y'all going to let all them old people come back? We're going to let James file his, file his paperwork. Y'all bear with me. I think I'm getting over the COVID. RSVP. Uh, uh, I put a little bit of Flonase up there. That should keep me from leaking. Uh, and speaking of leaking, child, oh, before we get in the club, Shay Shay, let me tell y'all one thing, and I probably shouldn't tell y'all. I went to pick my car up today, and my stomach was towed up this morning. It was towed up. It was towed up so bad I didn't even go to the gym. I don't know what happened. My stomach was towed up. And so I went to pick my car up, and uh, I went to the Walgreens on Biscayne Boulevard over there in Midtown. And I said, let me stop in here real quick and get me some uh, nasal medicine, and let me get me some anti-diarrheal pills. To help lock me up because my stool was soft. Child. My ass got in that Walgreens and I had on some pink yoga shorts, some Nike yoga shorts. Baby, I just thought I had to pass a little gas. Girl, y'all already know how this story is. Okay. And I was on the phone with my homegirl. I said, um, ooh. And Walgreens don't even have no bathroom. And she was like, yes, they do. I said, girl, I ain't never seen no bathroom open to the public in Walgreens. She said, um, Quentin, I have nieces and nephews. They always have to pee. Walgreens has a bathroom. I said, Kendra, Walgreens ain't got no bathroom. Um, she got off the phone. I went to the register and paid. I, I said, excuse me, would you happen to have a bathroom? The lady said, yeah, in the back. Or whatever. By that time, I was like, oh, Lord, I hope it don't get the stinking in here. Or whatever the case may be. And I had to waddle my ass to the bathroom. Praise the Lord when I looked down. It was only about a teaspoon. Okay? It wasn't a lot. Then I sat down and uh, the <laughs> child put it this way. The levees in New Orleans broke. Okay? And then I was able to get home. That's that on that, honey. I, I don't know what's going on. And then and, and you're right. And then got the nerve to be in here drinking a milky-based drink. That's because I wanted But I'm going to tell you what I did though before I got on this show. I took me three of them damn pills or whatever. So now my shit going to be locked up. My ass going to be in here um, crying to get it out. Come tomorrow morning, this stuff going to have me so locked up. These are the type of things that happen to you when you're over 40. Your knees get to acting up. Your stomach get to acting up. Your cars get to acting up. Your men get to acting up. Your kids get... Please skip this. This is disgusting. Forget you, see, darling. You can change the channel. Okay? We keep it real over here. People need to know... People need to, people need to know what goes on. Yeah, I, I'm quite disgusted. I'm disgusted. Bitch, you don't shit it on yourself before. We all have. It's natural. Okay? Hell. So not me, girl. Well, you, you wait. You wait long enough. All y'all talking about not me, girl. You wait long enough. It'll happen. You go down there and get you the, the wrong wrong cluster of crabs, crab legs. You go down there and get you a, a, a bad lobster tail that been sitting out too long. Y'all take y'all ass to Cheesecake Factory around closing time, then come back and holler at me. Since y'all so better than, since y'all so devout and devoted, since nothing bad ain't never happened to y'all. Girl, please. Child, please. Half y'all talking about not me, girl. Uh, gay birth is shitted all over the damn table. Ain't nothing more embarrassing than that trying to do me. I don't think so. I'm like, oh, that's different. That's different, girl. It ain't different. At least I shit it in personal. You shit it in capacity. Okay, with your legs all spread trying to do me. Anyway, let's move on to this club. Shay Shay interview because that's what the people is in here for and want to see. And for those of y'all who have not had an opportunity yet to ooh, the cord, hold on, girl, the cord don't got stuff. For those of y'all who have not had an opportunity yet to check out the club Shay Shay interview, you know, we got new e equipment, we got new situations going on, and we are in luck, honey, because I am able to play for you what you may not have heard, honey. And we're gonna get into it and we're gonna dissect it piece by piece by piece. By piece and the first piece that I want to start with is the piece where 
excuse me, we're going to start here with Monique talking about uh, Oh, child, I don't hear nothing. Hold on. I keep on getting it into. Oh, here we go. A watch. Here we go. Hold on, y'all. However, Taraji and I had a conversation. I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken mm -hmm. on those platforms. It was painful to watch. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you got to keep on getting it until your turn comes. And I said, Taraji, most of us die before our turn comes. We got to ask for it right now. Now, I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister broken, sitting on those platforms. Now, when I said it, when I said it. Why didn't it get the traction when you said it that when she said it, now all of a sudden everybody is coming, and I and I don't have a problem. I'm mm -hmm. glad. Yes. But if you said this a decade ago, and I yes. remember you saying it over a decade ago, why didn't it get the traction? Why didn't it get the support? Why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it? I think there's a few reasons why. Number one, it was the messenger. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Tyler's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producer. All right, y'all. So one time, first and foremost, for the sound equipment, we able to now play stuff that's real great. Uh, making small improvements at a time. Y'all got to work with me. I'm a one-man show. But let's break this down. Now, the first thing that I want to point out is, while I love Shannon Sharp, and I think he's a dynamic personality, I've noticed that when Shannon Sharp has guests on his show, he kind of panders to them. I would have loved Shannon Sharp in this moment to have been a bit more objective and to help Monique's feet to the fire with some certain things. Now, here's some things we got to break down, and we got to break down some ugly truths, right? Um, Monique said that her situation did not go over because she was the fat black girl. Um, there's a lot of truth and credence to that, all right? It goes without saying fat people in this society get treated different than skinnier people. Pretty people get treated different than uglier people. Straight people get treated different than gay people. You know what I'm saying? There's a niche and a notch for everyone. There is some truth to that. She also acknowledged the messenger, right? People did not like the message from the messenger. Here's the thing. Outside of just being fat and black, I think the bigger issue with Monique is that you're fat, black, and loud. And moreover, you're abrasive, all right? And that's your style. That's your personality. That's who you are. That's how you chose to attack this situation then you don't get to dictate how people respond, all right? It's kind of the same vein as to why white women know that when they sit down and cry, they get everybody's attention because it tugs at people's heartstrings. Unfortunately, Monique, you came into the situation with guns blazing. You came in with guns blazing. And in contrast, Taraji did this. It's, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. This tugs at people. Right, wrong, or indifferent. And a lot of y'all keep saying, you know, y'all getting so caught up in the messenger. Y'all getting so caught up in the messenger that y'all don't want to hear the message. That's not the way the world works, y'all. It just isn't. It's just not the way the world works then, now, or ever. The purpose of communication is for you to have a thought, you to convey it, and the person on the receiving end of your message is to receive it. That is perfect communication. 
if you come out the gates with guns blazing, yeah, you've communicated, but the person on the other side is unable to receive it. And we can sit here and argue all day long the reasons as to why people were unable to receive it. It's because she's black and because she's fat and because she's this. And all of those things are true. But Monique also knows that she's black, she's fat, and that she's loud. She's known it for 40-something years before she did the interview that she did. So she also should have had the foresight to know, I got to approach this differently because I got fat, black, and loud against me. We code switch all the time, y'all. Especially black people. Code switching is not anything new for us. It's not. And I think in the moment when Monique was expressing what it is she needed to express, the reason why Hollywood as a whole the community as a whole and white people as a whole did not take her serious is because you came off like the fat, black, loud ghetto girl. And yes, her message was true. And yes, she's saying the same things as Taraji, but people are unable to receive it when it's packaged that way. And somebody wrote, stop tone policing black people, black women. Baby, this is bigger than black women, woman. Everybody is tone police to a degree. Everybody is tone police to a degree. Y'all get me when I start, stop, 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 stop saying what, you, what you're saying about black women because y'all don't like the way it come out. Y'all tone policing me. I'm, I'm, I'm gay tone police. Everybody's tone police to a degree. And you know what? I'm going to stop tone policing black women. Fine. I'll stop tone policing them. But then you know what? You know what? Unpoliced tone black women need to stop doing they need to stop fucking complaining when they don't get their way because they tone rubbed people the wrong way you see how that goes it's a two-way street baby it's a two-way street you can't want everybody to give you all the grace to have whatever tone you want to have and then turn around and tell me i'm supposed to receive it however you give it to me that's not how this works baby that's not equality. That's called privilege. That is called privilege. So you want to? You don't want to be tone police? Fine, fine. But I don't want to hear your fucking complaints. But don't nobody want to hear what the fuck you gotta say because of your tone. Catch. And speaking of it, whoever that was with the stop tone police and black women, I'm gonna say this, and some of y'all are not gonna like it. I love the fact that my sisters have gotten empowered. I love the fact that y'all are standing together and demanding what it is y'all want and how y'all need to be treated. And you deserve to do that because the black woman has been shitted on for so long. But there are some of y'all that take this shit to the extreme. Now every damn thing is a slight to you because you're a black woman. And for some of y'all, it's not because you're a black woman. It's simply because you're a bitch. And some of y'all don't like to hear it, baby. It's not because you black. It's because you a bitch. All right. Moving right along. Like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with the color now, purple. Now, this is Monique right. talking about Taraji to like and we Oprah. We didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter. It's Emily like, Williams, your mama, the bitch. We got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because that allows Lady O to keep on doing what she's doing. And we're in a position of, I don't want to say nothing because we saw how Monique got whooped. Now, again, that's just my humble right. opinion. But I don't know what else to, I don't know how else to frame that. It's like, listen, you better fix that because you saw what they did to her. You saw how they treated her. Is it a situation, do you believe it's a situation that Oprah might have faced something similar that maybe wasn't as public as you? And, and, and she's looking at it, well, if I faced that, went through it and came out on the other side and look at me, it should be okay. Because sometimes we get that with parents. You know, I struggle. You say my kids should have to struggle sometimes also. Do you think that might be something going on with her? Or you just like, she, there's a disconnect? There's a disconnect. Okay. 
there's a disconnect and there's been a disconnect for years. There's a disconnect. And I think what happens is we place people on these pedestals mm -hmm. and we say, oh, no, you can't do no wrong. We don't even want to hear it. Right. And when you hear cats say, you know what they do? They don't say anything and they act like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep talking until you take accountability. Right. Until you say, uncle, I've done this. That's why it was so important. From Oprah Winfrey to Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels. All right. So y'all get the point there. Now, listen, uh, in, in that interview clip, Monique was talking about Taraji backpedaling and pussy popping when it came to the cries that she was making about Color Purple. Because in the beginning of Taraji's press tour, she was complaining, 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 letting Oprah catch all these stray bullets and insinuations. And then later on, you can tell somebody got into Raji's ear and told her she needed to clean this up or whatever. And Taraji started singing a different tune, saying that it wasn't Oprah. It wasn't Oprah. Oprah actually helped us when she found out what was going wrong. And you know what? I agree with Monique. Anybody looking at this situation that's got a half a pancreas can tell that there was tension between Monique and Taraji. And Monique, tried, I mean, and, and Oprah, I'm sorry, Oprah and Taraji. And Oprah tried to get her ass on that TV and playing our face, making it seem like she was cold and it was cold. And that's why her and Taraji had the interactions that they had. But here, here is the thing. I have never, and, and y'all can go back and look at my track history, track record on this issue. I have never disagreed with any of what Monique was saying. All of what she's saying is true. I've always took issue with the way she went about it. And what's unfortunate is that in 2024, Monique is still only garnering interviews about her grievances. None of it is about her talent. None of it is about her projects. None of it is about what she's producing and or making. It's about backtracking. It's about her grievances. She's always complaining. And here's the question that you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself, what do you want, right? And there's a system that's in place. And if you want to work within this system, guys, and, and this is just a life lesson. If you want to work within this system, you can't be too much of an agitator. You know, like Lee said about Monique not playing the game. And a lot of y'all don't want to hear it. It's just, it's it's called simple politics. You know what I'm saying? Now, here's the thing. Maybe Monique has made up in her mind that she doesn't want to play the game. And that's cool. But then you don't get to complain about not reaping the rewards of said game or whatever the case may be. I do agree with her, though, when she says Taraji backtracked. But let's, let's talk about this. Do you think Taraji did sit down and say, shit, I'm already over here complaining about my bills and about being underpaid and about how after the government take their money, this is all I got left. Um, shoot, I don't want to be treated like Monique. I don't want to get spanked in public. Right, wrong, or indifferent, it's a very valid reevaluation for one to take or whatever. So I'm not saying I agree or disagree with Taraji backpedaling or pussy popping, but I will say I understand how one can take a step back and say, oh, okay, you know, I'm getting too much heat in this area. This did not go over well for Monique. But I will say this. There's also a world where Taraji can just also say, all right, cool. I could take my foot off the gas because I made my point. And maybe she wasn't backpedaling and pussy popping. Maybe she says, I've cemented this argument long enough I've been heard. Adjustments have been made. Folks know I'm not playing. Now I can let my foot up off the gas. There's possibly a world where that happens. We got two more clips and then we finna get into this D.L. Hughley read. Um, now this is Monique on Tiffany Haddish. Beautiful sister Tiffany Haddish. Mm -hmm. Did an interview with GQ Magazine. And this, in my humble opinion, is where we keep throwing each other under the bus mm -hmm. you're doing an interview with gq magazine and I, i'm assuming the journalist was a white person mm -hmm. and the conversation turned to monique 
And she said, well, I don't do business like Monique do business. And I'm glad I don't have that husband of hers. But she don't know your husband. And when I saw that, it's like, Tiffany, if you had a husband like mine, you may not have two DUIs. Mm. If you had a husband like mine, you may not be caught up in what looks like you could have been grooming a child. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that with no judgment. But when you speak about having a husband like mine, you open up the door. And I'm saying to you, if you had one like mine, I remember our beautiful sister Tiffany Haddish mm -hmm. did an interview with GQ magazine. And this let me tell y'all something. Y'all remember when we was putting together that panel of nice, nasty women earlier? How you call somebody your beautiful sister, your baby, and then you clear them the way Monique just cleared Tiffany Haddish? And let me tell you something. I mean, whether or not we believe a husband would have kept Tiffany from getting them DUIs and or doing that situation, that skit with every Spears with that child, the way Monique connected them dots, excuse me, and did that like that, she won. Now, here's the thing. Monique is always going to be defensive about her husband because to a lot of us, that arrangement just looks a little off-centered or whatever. Um, and I'm with Monique in being upset with this. Um, and here is why. Um I'm not a fan of us going to white people publications and airing out our grievances about our brothers and sisters. That's just not something I would do. You would never get me to sit on some white folks platform, uh, an all white publication that caters to white people and sit up there and bash one of my brothers and sisters. Now, I do it in the Source magazine all day long. I do it in the Write On magazine. I do it in Essence, Jet, and Ebony but you're not finna get me to discuss the business of another black person in a white publication. So I can definitely understand Monique and her rebuttal to Tiffany Haddish. But if you think, baby, if you think one time that Monique cleared Tiffany Haddish, D.L. Hughley not only cleared Monique, not only did he clear the room, he cleared my damn sinuses. Listen to this. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, and so Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy ass video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much in gain weight unless every crunch you do has got captain in front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. And uh, uh, my co-host Jasmine Sanders played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she says she got off, she called me. Monique did, and she said I was very dismissive, like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints, I listened to her, and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't, because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. It's, it's also befuddles the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody. Uh, allegedly, it stems from the fact that I used to always talk shit about her on video after video. And she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a fucking liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking shit about some uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This broad even brought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique bought that shit out and, and told the world that I allowed my daughter to be raped in front of me. The lying motherfucker. She knows she was lying. And it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren because nobody fucks with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real, except your daddy 
who you apparently have to pay. And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies, not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You'll never, you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she just spends as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the wor worst reviews of any Netflix special in history because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has. Well, well, <clears throat> well, well. Um, you know, so I see a lot of y'all in the, I see a lot of y'all in the comments saying hit dog or holler. Okay. She hit him. She did hit him. He got the right to holler. I see a lot of y'all doing that shit that I hate. Y'all, y'all love emasculating men. Now the, the new thing that y'all love to do is call a man emotional or call a man sassy, which is so fucking intellectually lazy. It's lazy. It's not even a read. It's lazy. Nevertheless, he cleared her ass. Two can play that game. And whether you agree or disagree, folks get sick and tired of you going on interviews mentioning them. Let's talk about the Netflix situation, right? Because I, I, I do have... All in all, if you feel like you're being mistreated at the end of the day, you do have the right to stand up and say something, right? And nobody has the right to dictate how you say something or to tone police you as y'all like to so eloquently or not so eloquently say but in that you need to understand that that's a two-way street and that you have the right to give it to me any way you want to and i got a right to respond to it any way i want to all right the issue that i have oftentimes with some of monique's arguments is that she conflates personal issues with historical issues yes there are pay inequities in hollywood amongst White, our white counterparts and black actors. We know that. We know that hands down. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, and I do not believe whatsoever that Netflix attempted to lowball Monique based on race. I don't. And I know that they settled out of court. Settlements are not admissions of guilt. Oftentimes, settlements are to make things go away. She got an undisclosed amount. And she also got a special that wasn't funny. And in the midst of all of that, you called down Amy Schumer. You threw all these other people under the bus. All these people caught stray bullets. And like DL said, some of the worst reviews of a Netflix comedy special. Those people have an algorithm. Those people know who their audiences are and they offered you what they thought they'd make or get, or get on your work. Monique, as big of a stink that you made about that Netflix special, your shit was supposed to come through and be the second iteration of the Queens of Comedy and it fell flat. It fell flat. So there is a lot of truth and credence to what DL is saying right now. If you spent less time complaining and more time and more time writing jokes and shit would have been funny. And then here's the other thing I didn't I didn't like about the Netflix special since we talking about it. Don't try to leverage the LGBTQ community with that little piece you threw out there about being bisexual or having feelings for women, but you could never come out um, because your grandma, girl, please, chat chat back. Everybody saw through that. Everybody saw through your attempt to appeal to every marginalized group in that subpar comedy special. All right. And two things can be true at the same time. Okay. Monique could be treated unfairly in Hollywood and her comedy special could have been trash. And both of those things were true at the same damn time. And here's what's funny I love Monique. I love her body of work. I love her. I, I remember Monique from Def Comedy Jam. I remember her on that show back in the day called Snap. You don't want to get a double whack snap on HBO. The little Caribbean man used to hang, uh, used to um, host when the comedians would rank on each other back and forth. Love the Parkers. We love her movies. Honestly and truthfully, Monique, at this point, we just want you to move out of the activist space, space and focus on being an actress. Let Amanda Seals and the more articulate and emotionally intelligent girls handle the activism work, girl. You just write the check and continue, continue doing your acting and stuff. We get the point. We got it. We got the point. We got it. You got the Grammy. 
We got it. You're a big star. We got it. We got it. I believe it alone at this point because y'all know y'all know I can take it there, but I believe it alone. Nevertheless, the Monique interview on Club Shay Shay was very interesting. Shouts out to Shannon Sharp. Uh, a lot of podcasters, YouTubers, celebrity gossip people kind of had an attitude with high profile sports people moving into this arena and sucking up space that was earmarked for us. I can tell you that I was one of those people who had an attitude with it at first, but I really do like how Shannon is leveraging his celebrity to shift culture. And his podcast came out of nowhere. We have been looking for the second coming of Wendy Williams. We haven't gotten it yet. And while Shannon isn't Wendy Williams when it comes to the hot topics, his brand has now laid the foundation that when you want to come or shake the table, when you want to come shake the atmosphere, you come and sit down with Club Shay Shay at Club Shay Shay. And for that, Black man, I definitely applaud you, especially considering the fact that you are doing work that is uh, traditionally female dominated. And so I think that that dynamic and that juxtaposition between all that masculine male energy and people feeling comfortable enough to gossip and entertain is very interesting. I think that's why people are taking a liking to this situation because we're not used to some big, burly, muscular man sitting down listening to people gossip and kiki and keep up mess. Moreover, are we not used to the big, burly, black, dark-skinned, muscular, scary black man in the alley uh, kiki alongside them? So everybody over there that's, you know, doing the club Shay Shay thing, responsible for this, shouts out to y'all. And when y'all really want me to shake the table and y'all want me to tell you who all the celebrities is that's gay and like trans people and be cheating on their wives with men and don't cheat on their wives and their girlfriends with me. Because y'all know some of them. Um, call me. I come sit on that sofa. I come sit on that sofa and I tell everybody business. Okay, because y'all know y'all know I love telling people business. That's why I'm in this business like Whitney Williams. I love telling them hoes business. And I know every bitch in Atlanta, I know all they business. So club Shay Shay people. Matter of fact, I don't even want to be in front of the camera. Just make me a behind the scenes producer so I can tell you what to ask these hoes when they come in there. Because I, I know, I, bitch, I know all them hoes business. I know, especially their husband's business. I know all they business. I know they business. I got the pictures. I got the Texas. I know the trans ladies. I know the girls. And who else business y'all want me to tell? Lawrence say some Lawrence vibes say some of y'all are just me. Lauren, I ain't me. Am I me? I who me? I ain't me. I ain't mean, if I was mean, I'd have been on told these hoes business. Okay. Um, let's move on, y'all. While we're talking about inequities in Hollywood, Travis Kelsey. Now, I know every black person uh, this side of the damn equator caught a attitude when it was revealed that white media was regarding Travis Kelsey's fade as the Travis Kelsey haircut. When brothers been getting fades, quiet as it's kept, since they probably since they drug our ass over here. I don't even know the history of haircuts because my hair is long and flowy and it flows down my small, thin, petite bike. So I don't know much about haircuts. I don't know the history of haircuts because my long Pocahontas like tresses flow down my small, demure, rich white woman, petite St. John's wearing back. But I do know that brothers been getting phased at least since the 60s or the goddamn 70s. Okay, now here is what I like, and here is why we got to call out them fucking culture vultures called the Kardashians and them white helpers on TikTok that stay biting black people stuff. What I love about Travis Kelsey is that in a moment where he could have capitalized off of this media, got deals, 
uh, you know, continue to let white media run around and name him the creator of the fade, better known or now known as the Travis Kelsey cut. He shut that shit down and said, this is not the Travis Kelsey cut. I just walked in and asked for it and they gave it to me. That is the way you neutralize culture appropriation. Not to mention, I'm sure all the black brothers in that locker room told that white boy they'd beat his ass if he didn't get out there on that next press conference and clear that shit up. Here it is. We've been rocking fades. You about walk came in here and watched our fades and our big, strong, burly bike. You watched our fade. You about took our picture and went to the barbershop and said, give me what my boy Dante got. And then you going to take the credit for it? Nah, they set his ass straight. When he came in that locker room, he caught the vibe. He caught the vibe. And they was like, hey, hey, dog. I'm saying, though, you're not going to clear that up, though? Yeah. The next time you get out there, you're going to clear that up. And I love it. He got out there and said, listen, this is not the Travis Kelsey cut. And for those of y'all white folks out there who are scared to just completely give the credit to black people because you think your own race is going to turn against you, we understand Travis Kelsey didn't even make it racial. He didn't even step into the racial equality activism space. He simply said, I am not responsible for this cut. I walked in and asked for it. That was it. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. And so here's what's unfortunate. Kardashians, y'all are in trouble. And the reason why y'all are in trouble is that a new standard has been set on how white people are supposed to conduct themselves when they are given credit for something that belongs to another group of people. Travis Kelsey has so elegantly and eloquently set the bar for how you're supposed to handle instances of cultural appropriation. Kim Kardashian, when you had those braids and they did what they did with those braids, the appropriate response was, guys, I was not the creator of this hairdo. I just, my stylist came over and we just tried something new for me. That's it. I get it. I get it that y'all live in a white world and y'all might not feel comfortable being the second iteration of Nikki Giovanni. I understand it and nobody is asking you to advocate for black people. We don't need you. You, you wouldn't be half good at it, no way. But at a minimum, if you don't want to give credit, don't take credit. That's all we're asking. For the slow people in the back, at a minimum, if you don't want to give credit, don't take credit. That's all you got to do. Travis Kelsey, we not, y'all, see, he don't mess around and slid his damn ass into black history. Wait a minute. He didn't take credit for the damn haircut, but tried to become a part of black history. Y'all see how these crafty white people to do? He don't fuck around and fuck up the thing. Now we got to celebrate Travis Kelsey during black history month. Lord have mercy. I thought I was saying something. He don't got us. This white boy don't damn got us. This was one crafty, you know what? He don't got us y'all. He don't trick me. He don't trick us during black history. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He tricked us. That bitch tricked us. And then went over there sitting up with Taylor Swift ass. Uh, what kind of hair do we want to see Taylor Swift with? What type of black hair do we want to see Taylor Swift with? Um, crafty, you know what? That is what I was going to say. What type of black hair do... I want to see Taylor Swift with a pinup with some freeze crust down the side. Now, bitch, if Taylor Swift show up to that football game or with some bar plats, I want to see Taylor Swift show up with some bar plats, bitch. That would shake Travis Kelsey and his fade and um, Taylor Swift with a French roll with the little pearls in the bike, like she going to Easter service, with the waterfalls to the side, bitch, I would holler. I would holler. Matter of fact, I even let her take credit for it. 
I would even let Taylor Swift take credit for it. I'll let her have all the credit. Or some finger waves. The white women's back during the Harlem Renaissance era, they used to do little finger waves. If you watch Boardwalk Empire, the white women used to have a little finger waves, some crochets. <laughs> all for kick said, Q, don't encourage this. No, I'm going to encourage it. No, no, Taylor Swift to have an old nasty scrunch, bitch. A scr no, an asymmetrical salt and pepper with some bamboo earrings. That's it right there. That's it right there. Somebody said a 27 piece. Now, we don't want her looking like Deaconess Johnson. Not just yet. We're going to wait till she get a little older. Um, Y'all, speaking of Black History Month, it is important. The United Negro College Fund need to start those commercials back. Remember the one with Marlon Wayans when, the, when they were graduating high school and the man said, so son, what are you going to do after this? He said, I'm going to go home and make a sandwich. And then we need to say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Well, Sukiyana did an interview with that white girl, that, that dry face white girl that uh that Offset had got together. And the girl referred to Sukiyana as a musician. And Sukiyana said she was not a musician, that she didn't do magic tricks. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I refuse to believe that the young lady didn't know the difference between magician and musician. At this point, I am willing to believe that Suki has a firm understanding of what her brand is. She knows that her brand is rooted in ignorance and that at this point, she's just playing with the people. She's a musical artist. She has to know what a musician is. When that girl said she was a musician and she said, I don't do magic tricks, Yes, V Green says Suki was trolling. I believe Suki was trolling, but in the event that you wasn't Suki, all I can say is bend that ass over and let that coochie breathe, okay? Because that's all y'all know how to do anyway, eat hot Cheetos and charge y'all phone, okay? So, and I'm, I told y'all on last night's show, um, I might be turning ratchet, y'all, because that sexy red, bend that ass over, let that coochie breathe, I just like it. I like it. And some of y'all got in my comments and said, Funky, I need you. You're not supposed to tell nobody that in public that you like that song. I'm telling y'all, bend that ass over. Let that coochie breathe. I don't know what the rest of us say, but bitch, I, ooh, bend that ass. It's just something that make me just, just feel sexy in between my legs and in my butt. It, it just do. It do. It do. It do. And I'm going to tell y'all something. We talk all this shit about these new kids' music. But me and my homegirl was in the car the other day and put it in your mouth came on. Now you can lick it, you can stick it, you can taste it. I'm talking every drip drop, don't you waste it. Baby, sniff it up, it's enough to fill your cup. It's finger licking good and I wish a nigga would go down kind of slow or even fast. I'll be sprung when I feel your tongue in the crack of my ass. Yes, I need a nigga. Eat me out like that, such a tasty treat. Now you can eat me out. So put it in my mouth. I said, put it in your mouth. I said, my motherfucking mouth. Or you could just eat what you chose to lick, pussies or dick. So it's like, I had to sit back and check myself, bitch, because when that motherfucker put it in my mouth, come on, bitch. I rolls my key key down to the ground, bitch, okay? Down to the ground. It takes me right back to college, bitch. And I'm classy like this and not like this. I got on St. John's, honey. Even though I'm getting musty in this motherfucker right now. But when that put it in your mouth, come on. When that put it in your mouth, come on. Oh, when that Trina, come on. Get a superstar. Nigga eat the pussy like a sushi bar. Never let a nigga hit the coochie raw. Might bust up on my Gucci bra. Two-piece coochie. You look at Suki, huh? Yes. And you see what I'm saying? So I had to check myself. I had to check myself because we give these young kids some flack. And then I tried to excuse it away, right? I tried to excuse it by saying, well, at least our stuff sounded better. Our stuff had a better beat to it. Our stuff wasn't mainstream. We wasn't singing our stuff in front of our parents. We was doing it in the club or whatever the case may be. Uh, I tried to excuse it away, and I'll come to the conclusion, y'all, that there really is no excuse and we just don't got old. That's all. It really ain't no excuse. We just got old. And that these kids ain't doing nothing that we wasn't doing. We just got old. So with that being said, I'm going to bend that ass over and let my coochie breathe, bitch. Let it breathe. 
And then when somebody grown catch me, I'm going to say, breathe again, breathe again. That I should. That's what I meant. Breathe again. Breathe. They be like, girl, get off the floor. Breathe again. Breathe again. I'm classy. <clears throat> That's the breathe. That's the breathe I meant. I meant breathe again. Not let my coochie breathe. Breathe again. Tony Braxton, not Sookie, not uh, Sassy Red. That's the type of breathing we doing. We over here breathing again. Breathing again. Na, na, na. Then the minute they go away, bend that ass over. Let that coochie breathe. <laughs> breathe again. Lord have mercy, Jesus. We had a good time tonight. Let me see if I can hit one more story if I let y'all out of here. Shouts out to Tina Heathington over there in Huntsville, Alabama. That's my cousin talking about I'm funny. Oh, you know, so I'll hit one more topic before we get out of here. We're going to hit a serious topic real quick. Oh, hold your line. Hold your line. So I saw a lot of requests. Bereave again. Bereave again. La, la, la. And I should never breathe, breathe again. That's what they need to be doing. Uh, oh, I cured your depression. You double shit, shit, shit. Thank you. All right. On a serious note, before we get out of here, y'all, there's a video that's been going around about this woman who is very upset and she's going off on, or somebody told me to talk about Nigerians looking down on black Americans. And then there's a video recently going around about this woman who's in her kitchen or in her house going off about people from Africa coming over or talking shit on African Americans. And I'm going to find the clip. I'm going to find that clip for tomorrow's show. But I'm going to find another clip. And it was a woman in Africa on a talk show in Africa on a panel. And they were discussing the disconnect between Africans and African Americans. And what I appreciated about this interview is that the African woman was very transparent and she was speaking on how she was raised in a home where her family, her village, her community, and her environment told her, when you go to America, don't go and be around those black people. They are good drugs, they are sex and rape. Do not be around those black people. You go find you some good white people and you be around those people. Now, pause. Let's pause for a second. If we look at the way America is presented in mainstream media, okay, let's take color out of it for the person on the receiving end. The messages that America sends the greater world is that these people over here are the people you want to be around and you don't want to be around these people over here. Okay, that is what our media sends, coupled with our history that these people from other countries do not even have um, an understanding of. So while it upsets a lot of people when foreigners come over here and look down on black people. I understand how foreigners can come over here and have the opinion that they have based on the limited information and images that they are giving. Now, going back to the interview, the black, the African woman then continues to say, then we, the Africans, come over to America with this judgment of these people. We come with this judgment and then we think that they don't feel this judgment, but they feel this judgment the moment we interact with them. They feel this judgment. And I appreciated her so much for being honest because they will try to gaslight the fuck out of us Black Americans into believing that we just have issues and all we see is race. And it's like, no, y'all come over here and y'all do look down on us. Y'all do shit on us. Y'all do go out of y'all way to separate and differentiate yourself from us without understanding, sweetie, to the very world that you're trying to assimilate into. Baby, they don't separate us from Haitian, African, Jamaican, Caribbean, Brazilian, Nigerian. We all niggas. 
And that's the part that be so frustrating for us black Americans. We'd be like, instead of y'all coming over here trying to shit on us, y'all need to be understanding how to navigate. You need to be talking to us on how to navigate this damn shit. Because you so busy trying to separate yourself from me to fit in with them. And I'm here to tell you, baby, you'll never fit in with them. Bitch, you darker than me. Ho, you darker than me. You darker than me, ho. And you think you finna go over there and sit over there with Amber and Stephanie them? Girl, and I'm Britney Spears. That really be the part. See, y'all Africans and y'all Caribbean folks, y'all really got it fucked up. Y'all really think we be giving a damn that y'all don't want to sit at the lunch table with us. Y'all really think we be giving a damn. We really don't. We really be laughing at y'all stupid ass. It, it really be laughter and frustration. Because it be like, bitch, first of all, I'm not begging to keep nobody who don't want to be kept, number one. And number two, girl, you going to be dying to come back and sit at this table after Amber and Stephanie and break your damn heart. But go ahead, girl, because you better than me, girl. You and your thick ass accent. Go, go, on, go, on, go on over there with your patois. Go over there with your patois and go talk with them and then come back over here and sit with us and then tell me um, which group you feel more welcome in. Girl, that's the real gag. That's the real gag. Y'all come over here and think y'all be fucking doing us and don't be doing shit. And we sitting up here laughing at y'all silly asses. Bad, bad wig, bad weave wearing, can't, can't match clothes to save your damn lives. Ass. Now don't get me sitting up here to perpetuate no damn stereotypes. And somebody said, don't put us Jamaicans in it. No, y'all Jamaicans are some of the worst goddamn ones. Quiet as it's kept. Bitch, if you really want to get me started, I live in Miami with y'all ass. Y'all, y'all Jamaicans is some of the worst damn ones. Y'all Caribbean folks, y'all something else. And I love y'all. To, I listen. I love everybody, but I'm just here to tell y'all what I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Y'all Jamaicans, y'all some of the worst damn ones. They talking about Q no I bitch. I'm on this liquor. I'm talking that. I'm finna get it started in this bitch. And y'all can throw all the goddamn uh, Jamaican patties this way you want to. Y'all some of the worst damn ones with y'all skin bleaching, crazy ass. Crazy ass. Come over here looking like damn glow worms, looking like your ass been going through radiation and chemo since 1999 and thinking you cute. Looking like you got reverse vitiligo from bleaching your damn self. Girl, don't get me started. Don't get me damn started. And y'all Nigerians, y'all bad too. Y'all with y'all bad dressing, tacky dressing asses. Them Nigerians know they ass can't damn dress. I'm finna get this shit started now. I don't give a damn. Whatever the hell was in this cup, I'm finna get this shit started. And y'all Nigerian men, y'all dress the worst, tacky asses. Stay wearing them fake aluminum foil Versace shirts and loafers. Thinking y'all doing some of them too tight, um, flooding ass pants y'all be wearing. Girl, don't get me started in this thing. The only people who come over here and be nice to black people is the Haitian people. The Haitian people be nice. They be nice. They be nice. The Haitian people be nice. TYD said, focus. You know, I ain't focusing. I'm finna get this shit started. Shit, I'm finna get it started. <laughs> Who else? What else culture y'all want me to go off on? I'm finna get this shit started. Damn Jew makers. Y'all kill me. Get on my last damn nerve. Living on dirt roads and shit. Always wearing dirty flip-flops anytime we look up a goddamn video of Jamaica and got the nerd to come over here and hold your nose down at somebody. Girl, please, I want to hold your nose up at somebody and half y'all over there look like y'all ain't even got no tissue to wipe y'all damn nose. Girl, get off my line. Get off my damn line. And I'm going to tell y'all who even damn worse. I'm going to get off my black people for a minute. You got damn Afro-Latino motherfuckers. Y'all Afro-Latino motherfuckers. Especially y'all got damn Dominicans. Y'all Dominicans got it the fuck going on. Okay, they need to study y'all level of delusion. Yeah, Afro Cuban. I, I know black. I know black. Bitch, you black. No, no, but I know black like this. Yes, bitch, you black like this, bitch. 
Think because you speak the Espanol, you better than some damn body. Girl, play. Girl, please. Michelle Bay said somebody cut the mic. Girl, please. Okay. It's them Dominicans. And them Afro, them Afro Latina ones is the worst ones. They, they, they got it bad. They got it bad. And I'm going to tell y'all why I ain't worrying about motherfucking being canceled. Because I'm telling the damn truth. And every black American who has ever experienced y'all ass as a collective knows exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Got the nerve to hold y'all fucking nose up at some damn body that looked like y'all. And y'all ass wouldn't even be able to come over here if it wasn't for black Americans. Let's talk about that, bitch. Y'all want to come over here and, and hold y'all nose up at the people who made it possible for your motherfucking ass to even come over here. The people who marched and got holes down and bit by dogs for your skin tone to even be acknowledged as human being on American soil. But you got the nerve to come over here and want to differentiate yourself from somebody instead of stand with. Okay? Girl, don't get me started on this thing tonight. Church running over. We were supposed to be gone. We were supposed to be gone. And I'm getting passionate about this shit. Now I better get off for real because I'm about to get this thing started. I don't start sweating and carrying on. No, uh -uh, let me get out of here. Y'all put something in the collection plate because this might be the last time I get a damn YouTube check after I don't win in on all these damn people. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, I'll call y'all hoes tomorrow. I don't tow their ass up enough. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them, y'all. As always, y'all, thank y'all so much for joining me. Listen, y'all, we, 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 we doing better. We got sound equipment. We got lights and stuff coming. You know, we, we, we got our black multicultural choir back. Um, We doing a Jamaican recruitment fund. I mean, a Jamaican recruitment fair. Please, if you have a Jamaican friend or Afro-Latino friend, tomorrow is Jamaica and Afro-Latino in Dominica night. We're going to try to show them that we don't bite and that we can cook real good too. And just because they use adobo and sazon, that they're not better than us, that Lowry seasoning salt, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper go just as far as sazon and adobo or whatever. So please invite them to church tomorrow because as part of Black History Month, after we get their ass together, we're going to try to unify the black diaspora, the African diaspora. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. I'll call y'all hoes later. Bye.